we're back. Let's just jump right into it. We've hit some new 52-week lows, uh, one-year low, two-year lows on some key cards. Let's go over those. The 89 Griffey Upper Deck PSA 10 rookie card, one of the most iconic cards ever. Well, it, the, in PSA 10 condition, it's hit uh, its one-year low. One of these just recently sold for 1620. So, some softening there on the icon iconic baseball card market. Again, it doesn't matter what you think of this card. It doesn't matter what you think of Griffey. This is one of the most iconic baseball cards in history. And now it's hit a one-year low. 0304 LeBron James Refractor PSA 10. This is at a two-year low. So the LeBron price is, stands for the triple logo manned card that sold recently uh, are just really, really soft. You've seen this across the board. This is a two-year low on this card. You've just seen softening across the board in LeBron, his rookies, uh, everything ba basically across the board with LeBron as people become disenchanted maybe with him, with the Lakers, with the poor performance of the team, uh, maybe with his politics. Who knows? Lots of things there could result in softening of LeBron prices. 86 Fleer, Michael Jordan card. Again, one of the most iconic cards along with the Griffey is at a one-year low. Again, we've talked about this card a lot. Uh, the last sale we even talked about was at 200000 So it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure we'll see a, one of those for sale around the national, one of these big auctions that are happening. I'm sure we'll see one of those for sale and see where the price goes. Next topic, let's talk about the Backyard Breaks cleaning crew. Literally just those dimples. So I'm thinking maybe I can scrub them out. Maybe the surface gets a nine. That's right. They recently posted something on Instagram saying how they cracked all these kind of cards that were in lower grade condition and they were going to kind of scrub them down with their cleaning kit and resubmit them over to PSA. It looks like, well, PSA, you know, everything that you guys say and do on camera, especially in the Backyard Breaks crew, is going to be scrutinized and you guys are going to be snitched on and somebody went and told PSA. We'll see if PSA does anything here couple things in this regard looks like the younger generation of collectors some of these guys who have come around in the last couple years they don't really care about the card trimming stuff they don't really care about this card cleaning stuff they see it as kind of a way to game the system maybe a way for them to kind of look smart to take these cards that are in lower grade condition and kind of gloss them up and clean them up and resubmit them and then make more money. So I think the, the younger generation of collectors doesn't see it as fraud or doesn't see it as scamming, doesn't, doesn't even put themselves in the shoes of the end collector who buys this card that has been rubbed down and scraped and put chemicals on and God knows what you guys do to these cards on and off camera. And you guys don't think about that in collector who now has a card that he thinks is a PSA 10 or BGS 95, but is something actually less. So the younger generation, I, I, I've noticed, doesn't seem to really care about this. You know, it's really up to the grading companies, PSA, BGS, SGC, and, and then the others, a couple we'll talk about in a little bit. You know, it's up to them to create standards and hey, maybe this is acceptable. I don't know. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying, hey, the younger generation is looking at this cleaning and the trimming and the rubbing down edges. And they're like, nah, sound. it's up to the grading companies, I think. Hello, I'm Joe Orlando. To decide the standard here. The, the only thing I'll note is, hey, we've seen a softening of the market. I'm mentioning cards that are hitting one and two year lows. Are we going to bring in new collectors and new investors, the people you guys love? by the way to make money in the hobby, the way to treat your cards in the hobby is you have to get them and now clean them. You have to use cleaning kits on, on these expensive cards. You've got to rub down edges and this is you know kind of acceptable and something you have to do in the hobby. I just don't think it it fosters new collectors. I don't think it fosters you know growth in the hobby. That's the only thing I'll say about this. I think there's always going to be people who, who do this. This has been done for decades, for years. Uh, before grading, they were, you know, scraping gum off cards and wax with pantyhose and so forth. So I know all this stuff has been done for years. I don't need comments with you dorks out there in the Midwest telling me this stuff has been done for years. I know! What I'm saying is the new generation of collectors uh, doesn't seem to care. And so we'll see if PSA, BGS, and SGC, they step up and want to do something about it. Speaking of people who might care about this topic, the grading companies themselves, I have been reached out recently by HGA. Somebody at HGA reached out to me on my personal Facebook account. I would appreciate if you guys, if you guys want to reach out to me, there's plenty of ways you can do that through Sports Card Radio venue. I am Sports Card News on Twitter. If you want to reach out to me there, that's probably one of the best places. My DMs are wide open whether or not I'm following you or not. 
You can literally log into Twitter and direct message me. I guarantee I'll at least see that. That's certainly a better place probably to reach me than my personal Facebook account. I also got reached out to by Elite Card Grading. They, I guess, have heard about, heard about Sports Card Radio now and uh, watch, presumably watched our video and wanted to chat. I, you know, it would actually be really fun to do an interview with somebody like Elite Card Grading or somebody over at HGA. It would be really fun for me. I don't know if I would do it. I don't know if it'd be worth it for me. Not from a financial sense. It was just, it would take me a little bit of time to prepare for something like that. And I just don't know if I'd want to do that. But anyways, I have been reached out to by HGA and Elite Card Grading. It appears as though they have now heard about Sports Card Radio and are now watching the program. So thanks for watching. Last thing I wanted to get into is just some positive things. With with the market decline, I am noticing, I, I am noticing value in terms of cards that are ending certainly a lot lower than the last couple years. I think I'm noticing a lot of value in basketball, a lot of basketball rookies in the last couple years. If you believe in these guys, that these guys are going to be, become all-stars, all, all NBA players, or eventually win championships. God, some of these guys that have been picked in the last couple years from the LaMelo Ball draft class and the Cade Cunningham draft class, these cards are dirt cheap, especially compared to what these cards have been selling for really since the post Luca and Zion years. Man, you can get stuff really, really dirt cheap if you really believe in some of these players that they're going to become all-stars or championship-level players. Really a lot of value there. On the football side, hey, football's so dominated by quarterbacks, and you have to pick these quarterbacks, and the only value and huge upside are with quarterbacks. So I stay away from it for the most part because I'm not a huge football guy. I can't evaluate quarterbacks the same way I, I can basketball players or even baseball players. On the baseball so side, it, I don't get the sense that a lot of you guys watch or even like baseball. Baseball is one of the only sports I watch. So yes, I can dip back into the prospect game. A lot of those cards have just absolutely declined heavily in value. There's not as much speculation in that game. I speculate and prospect a lot of, on San Francisco Giants players because that's the team I watch. That's the, the, the team I follow. I'm following the stats in the minor leagues. I'm following those players to a sense. So I might as well go on and buy a few cards and, and speculate there. It's not certainly not something I'm expecting to make a lot of money on. But sure, if I hit, you don't even have to really hit. These guys just really have to be called up. And you just have to, there's a window to sell these cards if they make the major leagues or if they have any kind of impact. They don't have to become, in baseball, they don't have to become Hall of Fame level players for you to return some capital on some some cards that you bought a, a while ago. So that's my thought on baseball. But again, a lot of you guys don't watch baseball, don't even care about baseball. So not even really worth talking about. Anyways, I'm sure you guys are all getting ready for the national, I'm going to call it the fake smile national. A lot of, a lot of fake smiles around there as the, market declines and things tank the fake smile national in atlantic cities coming up and we'll be here to talk about it on sports card radio until next time